Kathleen Kiznicki, and I am the chair of the Legislative and Economic Development Committee for the Pittsburgh North Regional Chamber. And today, for our Workforce Development Video Project, I'm interviewing Tricia Pritchard, who is the Director of Community Employment Development for Butler County Community College, or as we affectionately call it, BC3. Pr Tricia, welcome. Hey, welcome. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you so much for inviting me to, to talk about this new program that we started at the college. I'm super excited. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your role. This is a newer role for you from what I understand. And then tell us about the personal empowerment training program, a little background on it, please. Sure. So I've been at BC3 for almost 17 years now. And many people know me as the, the communication professor. In fact, my students here at the college call me Professor Poppins. And <laughs> okay. I, I have okay. loved and, and still love to teach communication ideas and concepts to others. Mm -hmm. But in March of 2022, I transitioned into a new role here at the college, as you had mentioned, and I'm the director of community employment development. And what does that mean? What I am responsible for is building, developing, and supporting a new program that we're offering, offering here at BC3, or really through Butler County, and that's the Personal Empowerment Training Program. And what's really cool about this, Kathleen, it's a personal development program. Okay. And how I explain that to other people is in this training, what we teach you is emotional intelligence concepts. You actually learn 40. Oh, oh my. And a lot of people are familiar with emotional intelligence, soft skills, essential mindsets, mm -hmm. but they have no idea that there's all of this content mm -hmm. that you learn related to that. Okay. But what makes it personal development versus like professional development is that whatever roles you have as a person or individual, this training can help you. So say for example, I'll use myself. I am a wife, a mother, a teacher, a leader, a volunteer, a neighbor, a friend, a family member, et cetera. And Mary Poppins, of course. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> So what I learned in personal empowerment training, which I've taken the training myself, Kathleen, mm -hmm. I can use that content to help support me in all of those roles. Okay. So that's what's really cool because, you know, we need support. And in, in previous, you know, or traditional, I should say traditional educational um, models, this type of content isn't really taught. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So you know, an emotional intelligence in law school, I can tell you that. That's for sure. Right. So we're talking about, you know, concepts such as cognitive restructuring. You know, we are kind of trained to like look at things like if we have an experience or an event, something that occurs through time mm -hmm. and, and patterns that we've established in our life, we have a tendency to look at something and experience it a certain way. Okay. And sometimes that's great and very healthy, but sometimes it's not healthy or we have a tendency to look at it in a negative manner. Well, we want people to know that you have a lot of different choices in regards to how you experience things or how you can see something. So I use this a lot with my kids or with my students. Like if they say, for example, they apply for an internship mm -hmm. and they find out, you know, they get that rejection you know, notification or email that says, yeah, sorry, we already filled that. You know, there's that sense of like, oh my gosh, what, you know, I'm, I, what did I do wrong? Well, cognitive restructuring in conversation through like learning through emotional intelligence, you can learn that maybe now is just not the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, no, doesn't mean not ever. How about let's try again next year. Maybe we'll apply a little bit earlier, but are there healthier alternatives to look at situations. That's cognitive restructuring. Okay. So a lot of this, even though it is personal development, does help people in their professional lives, obviously, for that. Of course. So who is BC3 targeting with this program? Who is the main persons you're trying to help? I mean, I know it's benefit to everybody, obviously, but yes. BC3 obviously has a goal for this program. For the well, Absolutely. So I'm happy that you said everybody, because we've honestly had 
I feel like a little bit of everyone that has completed and taken the training and yeah. we've gotten amazing positive feedback. So we have had high school students that have taken the training. Okay. I have had and have right now college students taking the training. And as you know, Kathleen, college students are your traditional college students mm -hmm. and then your non-traditional college yeah. students. Yeah. So it's a, it, it's a real mix. We have had veterans take this training. Uh, in fact, if I could share, I have a veteran and I'm super proud of her. I just saw her picture in the paper. Mm -hmm. So she is a veteran in the recovery community. Mm -hmm. She went through personal empowerment training. She is now in as a peer certified specialist, supporting other people, females, veterans. Okay. So and she took the personal empowerment training. Okay. So I, I have, in fact, I've said to her, you know what, you know, in the near future, I think I'm going to need you to come and speak to a group and talk about your experience and what you're doing now. Cause it's super cool. Yeah. Right. So we have had individuals in the recovery community also take the training. Now, when I think it, this is very important, when people say recovery, what does that mean, Kathleen? We're all recovering from something, right? Mm -hmm. We could be talking about mental health. We could be talking about grief or loss. We could be talk about addiction. We could be talking about trauma. There's a lot of things related to that. So that's a very big term. Yeah. So I like to kind of define that a little bit. Then we've also had individuals that are employees and uh, maybe they're you know long-term employees that have been with an organization. Maybe there are newer employees that are taking the training. And then we have had individuals, I should also say, both in for-profit organizations, non-profit, uh, educators. Mm -hmm. So people who, principals, guidance counselors, uh, teachers. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of who so far has taken the training. We actually have some organizations that I'm kind of like picking up on their patterns too, mm -hmm. that they're like, now that they're in and they've had the experience, they keep fun like there it's like a funnel. They keep sending okay. another person for the next training, okay, which is so, a good sign. Yeah, so that's good. Organizations are seeing the value. So that's the whole crux of you know, especially for the chamber membership. Tell us how this has really benefited employers and employees that relationship, and also then helping people retain employees for for their jobs because that's the biggest concern of our membership is not only just recruiting employees, it's retaining the employees that once they're there. Can you please explain right. all that? You know. That them? Sure. So I think there, you know, for a while, you know, it was originally, you know, the roots of this program. Yeah. And if I could just go back real quick, that we use a curriculum that has been developed over a 30 year period of time through Twin Cities Rise, the Empowerment Institute. Okay. And when this program first kind of was given birth, it was given birth by Stephen Rothschild. He was the vice president of General Mills Food. And he was, he saw individuals in poverty that were unemployed and he wanted to help support them, give them um, the emotional intelligence piece and then help them become gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. So he's, this is how this program started. Super cool. It was for an employment. Yeah. yeah. And what they, what people saw was that these individuals that went through this program, they, you know, they were, they had a little like different beat to their step. Right. They had a little different attitude when they came to work in a positive way. Yeah. And, and everybody was like, what's going on? What's there's something different about those folks. And then they were able to see that it related to the personal empowerment training. Well, fast forward to 2024. We know unemployment is pretty low. Right. And uh, but we want as employers, we want people when they come in employed with us, we want to be able to keep them and to support them. And, and this program really, for me, I believe when an organization says, you know what, we want to send you through personal empowerment training, that's telling the employees, we care about you as an individual. Mm -hmm. And we know that this is helpful for everybody. Yeah. And, and this is going to give you the tools and techniques to become the best version of yourself. And as you develop yourselves, then there's going to be more opportunities for you to grow with us, the employer. Mm -hmm possibly like even into like leadership roles or positions. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, definitely, I would say the employer advantage. And employers are also realizing 
that, you know, a lot of what individuals will learn through personal empowerment training is directly tied to communication yeah. skills, which is why I'm doing the program, right? And we know culturally that individuals' communication abilities are kind of diminishing. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily because of what's happening in the world or what has happened most recently has helped individuals improve their communication. So for example, we know the pandemic, you know, people were sheltering at home. Yeah. Um, I mean, it had a super big impact on, on, on kids who, yeah. you know, no longer had the uh, experience of learning social skills through having yeah. play dates, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But there's so many factors, but the pandemic really hit everybody. And then we know technology, right? Everybody's kind of attached to their device. So again, I'm not, not saying we all use technology. I'm the first one that says I, I use it daily. We're using it right now. Yeah. But it's definitely, you know, the idea of picking up the phone anymore and calling somebody is something that actually I can tell you this is the truth. My college students fear. Okay. Yeah. And in my classes, like if I design a mentor project, I want people to make phone calls and my students are looking at me like, you want me to do what? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the whole like fear of like the unknown and rejection, those types of things. So it's really kind of like impacted individuals like self-esteem and self-confidence, which is something through the personal empowerment training program that we want to build. Yeah. Because this also sounds like not only it's good for the individuals trying to go to the workforce, it's also would be good for leaders to learn this to be that are interacting with those employees as well, all right? I mean, so even if you're an experienced person like myself, it probably would be good for people like myself to take this program to learn more about ourselves so we can be better leaders in our organizations and our community. I absolutely agree with you. I am so thankful that this is something that I studied even honestly before I took mm -hmm. on this role. And in learning these ideas and in implementing them in my home, like with my kids, Okay. Or as a teacher with my students, mm -hmm. it's amazing the impact it has. So, you know, for example, in the classroom, what I could tell you as a teacher, as an educator that has implemented these ideas, use this type of language yeah. when I'm engaging and interacting with my students. What is What are the results that I see in the classroom? Mm -hmm. I see students who come early to class. Mm -hmm. I see students who want to be there. I see students who want to know what's the next class you're teaching. I see students who are bringing their friends. Let's translate that into like the workplace environment. You know, when you are able to have this, of uh, these skills and this knowledge and share with your employees, what do you see in return? You see employees that are more engaged with their work. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of wanting to, you know, to please their boss, yeah. to want to learn from you, yeah. to look up to you. Uh, and, and I've read some statistics that actually said profitability for employers increases uh, for those institutions or organizations that have a high, higher emotional intelligence by like 24, 25 percent. Oh, wow. See, that, and that's important. It's a more and that's important. Exactly. Organization. Profitability. Profitability, but that also means the organization itself being more productive and contributing more to our yeah. society and our communities. Well, that's great. Can you tell me a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the program? You know, like how, sure. how long is the training? How large are your classes? Those type of things. The perfect. Yeah. Excellent question. So we offer trainings pretty regularly. I'm right now, uh, you know, it's it's almost the middle of March and our next training is going to start at the end of April, the beginning of June. Okay. Right now we have two trainings happening right now mm -hmm. that are in 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 play. Let's just oh, okay. say we're okay. about halfway through. Okay. I have four personal empowerment training certified facilitators. Okay. And they have a variety of backgrounds and experiences that are amazing. And I, I mean, my, I, I'll call them my team. I love my team. And uh, so we have, we're blessed with wonderful trained facilitators. I would also want everybody to know that these certified uh, facilitators were certified through Twin Cities Rise, through the okay. master trainers there. And when I think back to where we were in March of 2022, to yeah. March of 2024, yeah. we have taken refresher courses. We have now expanded our offerings so that we're able to offer this training as both in person, 
online uh, or a combination of both because you have to meet the needs of today's individuals. Yeah, yeah. So for example, last night at the library here at the college, mm -hmm. we have four people that are taking the training in, in person. They're coming okay. to the library. And then I have eight individuals that are taking it remotely. Oh, okay. And they're taking it from all different locations. Okay. And I mean, it's been running smoothly. I mean, it's going really well because it's always a little bit nervous when you, you know, you're, you want to expand because yeah. you want to reach more people, but I'm real big on wanting to do it. I'm a kind of a perfectionist, Kathleen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, those are the, so is Mary Poppins, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah. But it, the, the class itself or training is 24 hours. So, okay. you know, groups typically meet, we call them cohorts. A cohort will meet say three to four hours once a week over a period of a few weeks. Okay. So it, it, on average, it's taken about two months to get through the program. What's really cool is you, you know, you have your personal certified, uh, the, the, the personal empowerment training certified facilitator. Yeah. You have also the access to an LMS, which stands for a learning management system. Okay. So back in the day, you know, we used to print, print, print everything. We really don't do that too much anymore. Okay. You can go into the system and follow up on, see more additional content, videos, do an exercise. There's all of these resources that you are able to tap into during the training to enhance your experience. Okay. And then finally, uh, when you're all finished and you get your certificate, let's just say graduate, uh, you, we will then invite you to download an app and this is all included. There's not like additional charge or anything. You get to download an app and that app, you can continue to stay engaged with, engaged with empowerment concepts because materials always change it. Yeah. New ideas, new articles, a new video is coming out. So yeah. new information is constantly being added to that app and you can continue to engage with yeah. that as long as that app's on your phone. Well, Everything, well, life is a lot, your life learning experiences, you're not going to change. You always have to learn. And I, that makes perfect sense. That, and that's good that people can keep up with that, that you keep communicating with people and interacting with them after the, after they're yes. done with their class and they get their little certificate. You don't just send them out into the world and say goodbye. That you're still yeah, No, yeah, you know me. I want to yeah. I want to have you in my life forever. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I think that's awesome. That's great. And, All right. Can I just say, say a couple more little things? Because I think this is important. We, besides these open enrollment trainings that we offer, we can also create an experience for your company, for example. So if a company says, you know what, we'd like to host this training for our folks, we can, there's discounted pricing, actually, if individuals want to create their own kind of cohorts. Okay. And we can come to you or we have, you know, multiple campuses in different counties, um, we've had trainings in, in different places, not just at the main campus here at the college. Okay. And then finally, I would want to emphasize that when we are working with individuals, especially let's say with those folks who might be facing barriers, we as our team want to get to know those individuals. And, it, you know, we always want people to know it's, it's, we don't want to force anything, Yeah. you know, but we want people to know we are here to support them. And we have, you know, connected people too. Do you know they want coaching with resumes and employment to, to or connection to employers? I'm here. Yeah. If you want to attend one of our free uh, computer classes or financial literacy classes, I can connect you to that. Okay. Uh, we're here to help connect them to other additional resources that are mm -hmm. available. You know, even after the training. So. Okay. Well, that's great. So, like you said, you have all this great offer. And how can people, what's the information, that, what's your connection information? You know, how can people reach out to you, our membership and other people watching this video to learn more about your programs and what you're doing? Sure. So they could go to bc3.edu backslash empowerment. Okay. Or they could give me a call at 724-287-8711. Extension 8281. And then finally, they could email me at Trisha, T-R-I-C-I-A dot Pritchard, P-R-I-T-C-H-A-R-D at bc3.edu. Okay. Well, Trisha, thank you for giving us so much great information. And I'd also like to thank the Pittsburgh North Regional Chamber for giving us this opportunity to educate our membership. Goodbye, everybody.
Thank you.